Hey YouTube, welcome to my channel. In this video, we'll be putting together two of my favorite looks. So one is a romper. I love rompers, I love jumpers. The whole idea of putting two in one is really exciting to me. Um, I'm not sure why, but I just love them. Um, and the other is the halter top. So I went ahead and I used this awesome fabric to make this awesome romper. And here is the finished product. So I'll be taking you through all the steps that I used to make this romper from beginning to end and I didn't use a pattern I used my own clothes um, I did however use a halter top with a certain shape that you may or may not have so if you want to see me make this halter top so that you can put this romper together um, I will make sure to release that in an upcoming video don't forget to press like don't forget to subscribe and don't forget to share this video with somebody who you know is learning how to sew Enjoy the tutorial. In order to make my romper, I will be tracing the shape from one of my favorite pair of jeans. I really like the fit of these jeans and I'm going to be tracing the top, the shape of the top from one of my favorite tops that already exist. And you've seen this top make a comeback in several videos and you're going to see it here again today. So I took my fabric and I folded it in four. As you can see here, the fabric is folded inside out and I love that design on the fabric. This is gonna make a great outfit, I hope. All right, so I am gonna start off by making the bottom first. And this is, by the way, folded in this direction. It stretches in this direction. All right, so I'm gonna take my jeans and I am gonna fold my jeans in half. and lay it out so that I can use it as a pattern. So I laid my jeans out so the hip section is over here, the inseam is over here, and I'm going to trace out this shape, all four panels at once, and that will guarantee that all four parts of the pants, the front, the back, the left, the right, are going to be the same size, and when we're sewing it together, we just have to do small adjustments to make sure it fits properly. Now, I think that my fabric and the jeans stretch around the same, but just in case, I am going to pin a little bit uh, larger, a little bit outside of my pant leg, so that if I need to adjust to make it smaller, that's fine, because it's much easier to adjust to make something smaller than it is to make something bigger. So I'm going to go ahead and pin the shape going around this. I went ahead and pinned the outside and I pinned this area here as well. I did not pin the waist because we will not be sewing that together and I did not pin this because we will not be sewing that either. That is where the legs will be joined together. But I'm going to go ahead and cut the shape out now. So right now all four panels are pinned together, which means both of our legs are pinned together, which is unacceptable. Of course, we need separate legs. So what I'm going to do at this point is I'm going to take out each pin individually. And before going to the next pin, I am just going to go ahead and catch the two layers for one leg and do the same for the bottom leg. Or the right leg we'll see and I'll just keep going and unpinning repinning and pinning the two separate legs I went ahead and I separated the legs out from each other and I tried it on and it was a little bit too big but I actually like it that way because the top is going to be very fitted and I think it's going to be kind of a good look to have a pretty fitted top and a less fitted bottom half so I'm going to go ahead and take this to the sewing machine and finish up my seams before I put these together. I'll be sewing this up with the zigzag stitch so that if I end up pulling or tugging, I want this to be able to stretch because this is a four-way stretch fabric. All right, so here is one of our legs. Notice it's uh, right side out. And here is the out seam, and here is the opening. This opening will be used to join this to the other leg, which as you may notice is inside out. So I am going to take one leg and stuff it inside the other leg. So I'm gonna go ahead and take the first leg that you saw and stick it into the other leg and match everything up. The goal here 
is for me to match the inseam to the inseam. So here we go. And notice that the right sides are touching each other here. And so I'm gonna go ahead and pin my inseam. All right, so after lining up the seams for the two legs, I went ahead and I pinned along the line that I cut on one side, and this side will be representing the back of my shorts, so I'm, I need a bit more space in the back. Um, and on the other side, I didn't quite uh, pin along the line, I just went in a little bit more. Now before I sew this up, I'm gonna try it on because chances are I might need to make a few adjustments and that's totally okay. So I tried it on and I made some adjustments to the front, the back I still have the same. And for the front, I took some more out. So as you can see, I've pinned quite far from where I cut the fabric originally. Um, and that's so it's not sagging in the front. We don't want that, that looks terrible. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and sew this up using a zigzag stitch. When you get to the point at which the back and the front meet each other, I just wanted to get a little bit of a closer look here or give you a little bit of a closer look. As long as everything is positioned properly the way that I showed you, we can just go right over the seam. All right, so now look at how nice and neat that came out. All the seams meet together perfectly. No hole, no jumping, perfect. All right, so on the inside, we have a lot of fabric to cut off, which is fine, easy stuff to do. All right, now we're gonna to transition to the top of our romper. So my fabric is folded in four once again in the same way, and now I'm ready to do the top. So I have my shirt that I'll be using as a pattern for the top, and I am gonna go ahead and fold that in half. Now, if you want a halter top in the same shape as this shirt, I will eventually be making a tutorial for this shirt as well. All right, so for now, I'm just gonna trace out the shape that we already have. So my shirt is folded in half, and the fold of the shirt matches the fold of the fabric. And I am going to go ahead and pin along the seam so that I can cut out that shape. So right now I have four layers of fabric together. So like what I did with the bottom, I'm going to unpin each one individually and repin two layers of fabric so that we can open up our shirt. So now we have our seams pinned on both sides and now I'm going to go ahead and cut this off so we can get the halter look in the back. Right, so I've pinned the hem of the top back and the slant area in the front and I'm going to hem that before I sew up the side seams because it will give me a cleaner finish. So now it's time to sew our side seam. I've pinned the hem of the top front part of the shirt, and this is the part that the string is gonna go through for uh, the neck. And so you wanna make sure that this is a little bit bigger than a normal hem so that string can fit through properly. I cut a strip that's an inch and a half wide and I folded it in half and it stretches in this direction. I am gonna go ahead and sew this with a zigzag stitch going all the way down and then I will turn it over. All right, so I've sewn the seam for our string for the neck and now I'm gonna turn this over. So in order to turn this over, I pin one side of my string and I'm gonna take the pin and I'm gonna feed it through. And since our fabric is a little stretchy, I think this should be relatively easy to feed through. And we're gonna go all the way until we get to the other side. It's a pretty long string though, so it might take a while. All right, so now we have our string that goes around the neck 
and we have the hem that we created to put that string in so I'm going to go ahead and I still have the pin on that string so I'm going to use that pin to help guide it through that space. So here are my completed shorts and here is my completed shirt. Notice that my shorts are right side out and my shirt is inside out. Um, and I want to make sure that I am paying attention to the fact that this is the front of the shorts because I do not want to put the front of my shirt on the back of the shorts. So that's something you want to be really careful with. All right, so I tried both of them on together so that I could mark out where I wanted them to meet. So this is where I want the shirt to meet and I did the same thing on the shirt. I have pins where I want it to meet with the shorts. All right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the shirt and put it upside down over the shorts, but I'm going to be stuffing the shorts into the shirt. All right, so here we have our shorts in the shirt, and now we're going to pin them together. And I do have to stress, trying these on together was a crucial step. If I had not done that, I would have left the shirt part of this way too long. Uh, because I guess my torso is just not that long, perhaps. Okay, so now where I pinned on the shirt and where I pinned on the shorts, they will have to meet. I went ahead and pinned the whole way around. I tried it on again because I wanted to make sure that everything was lining up properly, and it is. So I'm going to go ahead and sew it now. And this, more than any other part of this garment, is very important that you sew with a stretchy stitch because it is going around the waistline and it will not be able to go on if it cannot stretch. All right, so now we are almost done and I am loving the way this looks. The only thing left to be done is I think the shorts are a little bit too long. So when I last tried it on, I put a pin at where I want it to end. And so I'm going to go ahead and add about an inch, a little bit more than an inch. And I'm going to cut the length off of one leg, fold my piece, and then make sure everything is symmetric and cut the length off the other leg.